Hey everyone, welcome back. How was everyone's Christmas break? Hopefully better than at Debenhams, where they apparently had to cancel the nativity play due to the lack of a profit. In my house, a memorable highlight or low light of Christmas was when someone tried to use the word Brexit in a game of Scrabble, and thus caused a bit of an argument as to whether it was allowed or not. Although at least in the end, we confirmed the rules and we accepted the result rather than trying to drag the game on. By the way, did you hear the one about how old MacDonald had a very bad Scrabble hand? E-I, E-I, oh. But yes, welcome to 2021. Anyone got any year's resolutions? Mine is 1080p. Anyway, the main news story, of course, has been the movement of Britain from being part of the EU to being an international sovereign country again, which trades on its own terms and exports to the rest of the world. And it seems one of the first big exports has been a new strain of super COVID. Have you ever seen a chart of where the new super COVID has been detected and you see them using red to colour in all the affected countries? You might be patriotically pleased to see it looks very much like one of those old British empire maps where they also used red to colour in half the world. Royal Britannia, eh? Makes you want to pour a glass of gin and raise a toast to the fact that hardly any of the stuff in the British Museum is actually British. But anyway, for now, we'll wait and see how the corona plays out. You know, for me, the highlight of the new year is always when the National Archive releases some of the newly declassified stuff. There's always interesting bits and pieces. And this year, there's one where apparently in the 1970s, the British government assumed that the US was poised to invade Saudi Arabia and impose some kind of regime change to lower the fuel prices and end the oil embargo. But luckily, they left it alone and Saudi Arabia never caused any geopolitical problems ever again. <laughs> you know, if I had to rate the political relationship between the US and Saudi Arabia, I'd probably give it 9 out of 11. Write it down, figure it out. The other bizarre story here is that apparently back in 1995, Impressionist Rory Bremner called around a few backbench Conservative MPs pretending to be John Major to see if the impression was convincing enough. And in the process, he accidentally stopped a rebellion on the far right that would have toppled the PM and almost certainly have put Michael Heseltine or possibly Ken Clark into Downing Street. You know, the ultimate irony here is that Rory Bremner has spent the past four years being a vocal campaigner for a second referendum in cancelling Brexit. And yet it seems that he was personally responsible for stopping a chain of events that would have almost certainly have seen Britain join the Euro thanks to Michael Heseltine. And talking of tinpot dictators, apparently the MCC was blocked from giving a membership to Robert Mugabe. Apparently it was a decision made personally by John Major, who aside from being PM at the time was also thinking of his retirement and presumably didn't want to have to risk sitting next to Robert Mugabe for five days at Lords. I joke, of course, England would have never lasted five days back in the 90s. No quote from Mr Mugabe, although I'm guessing at the time he thought that the way the MCC behaved just wasn't cricket. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, please subscribe. Bye.